Hey guys, welcome to the second week of our video podcast. Yes, video this year. What an update. It, <laughs> update. That's a beautiful word, Emery. It is. Value added. Update 2.0 here. Uh, you've, you've got Emery and Don. Update 2.0, yep. uh, the newer version of the podcast. <laughs> With a guy that's not so new uh, yep. or young, um, but um, here's what you got. You got yeah. me and Emery today, and I'm thankful for God's Word. I'm thankful that you're walking through God's Word again, yeah. and we're excited to walk through Matthew yeah. chapter 8 through 14. Yeah, absolutely. That's where we're going today. Beautiful, guys. Um, let, I want to jump right in, if I can, just take it off the top sure here um, with Matthew 8. I just want to read right here at the beginning, Matthew 8. Verse 1, you're going to start with this beautiful beginning, Jesus cleanses a leper. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. You can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately... His leprosy was cleansed, and Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. And the yeah. thing that I, I love about this is this interaction between a leper mm -hmm. who is unclean. And yeah. in, by, by the Old Testament standards and the law, uh, one of the most unclean states of living yeah. that you could be in was a leper. Yep. And it, it's all through scripture how they're unclean, 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 unclean. And Jesus here in Matthew 8 kicks off this week's reading with us and he comes down, great crowds, everybody's around. And a leper comes to him and says, in all of his uncleanness, one of the most unclean humans that, that could have been before Jesus yeah. in the crowd's opinion. Mm -hmm. That's there. Absolutely. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Yeah. And I just feel like, um, man, in our lives, I need Jesus clean. Yeah. There's a song by Nicole Nordeman, I believe is who it mm. is. And it's called Clean. I encourage you to go listen to that song. Yeah. And it talks about being clean before him and what that, what that feels like, the experience of being clean before the Lord. Because we know, every one of us knows what it's like to be unclean. Yeah. But this leper and me and Emery and you, everyone, everyone who has claimed the name of Jesus for the repentance of their sins gets to experience clean clean, clean. So this morning, I just want us to know that Jesus clean is stronger than your unclean. Jesus yeah. clean is stronger than your unclean. I want us to hold on to that today. I want us to, to walk in the clean that Jesus offers for us. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that song and it's fascinating. I remember that song. Yeah, it's a powerful song. It, it's a powerful song and it's an uncomfortable song. It is. I remember like singing that song and yes. listening to that song and the thought of of you as unclean yeah. as you listen to it. Like it's an uncomfortable song. It is very uncomfortable. And and I and I, I just slowly my state of clean before the Lord because of yeah. Jesus' blood is I am righteous, made yeah. whole. Yeah. Um but in my experience, and as I continue to walk through the simple world, man, I'm just like, I don't always feel that place of righteousness yeah. and experience and am Absolutely. mindful of that cleansing. So Absolutely. every time I listen to that song, we probably listened to it, I bet we listened to it 15 times last week in our house. Oh, Amy, did you Amy, really? Amy and wow. I did. Amy listened to it about 50 times. Yeah. Um, and she had done a Bible study uh, on, on, on that word clean and just landed at that place. And man, it's powerful. The more I listen yeah. to it, the the more aware I am of the cleansing I have before yeah. Christ. It's a humbling song. It is. And and you know, so words have meaning. So he didn't say, you know, you're you're broken, let me make you well. He didn't say you have a physical thing going on. Yeah. Let's repair that. Yeah. Let's go to the doctor and put a splint on mm -hmm. that. Uh, there's moralistic words used in that that cleansing. Yeah. 
you know, you're clean when you're cleansed from Christ and you have to go to the priest and do that. Yeah, it's an awkward thing, but we're unclean. Yes, we are. We're unclean. Yes, we we're are. walking around unclean mm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And the only one that makes us clean is the righteousness of Christ. We're set our own righteousness is like filthy rags. Yes. It, it's him that makes us clean. And what I love about this, this passage, God. you could go on just for so long in this passage. No one would walk up to this guy. Mm -mm. And uh, how bold it is for this guy to walk up. To yes, Jesus, yes, you're right. Who is, you're right. Who is seen even by some as a rabbi, yeah, as a religious teacher of the day, for him to walk up to him. Mm -hmm. uh, it said he, he had faith. He had faith to do that because you wouldn't risk that yeah. if you didn't have faith to do that. That boldness is culture. necessary oh, uh, yeah. to come to Christ. I, I, I mean, we're called. I was quoting this verse last last week in my head. Yeah. Um, but just to boldly come to the throne of grace so yeah. that we can obtain help in time of need. And that's what Absolutely. this leper does. Absolutely. He does. He, he embodies that. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, mm. Just so much more to that passage than, than what it seems. And all of these, maybe you've heard them a bunch of times in your life, but there are things to dwell on that yes. relate to us yeah. so much. As we go on to the faith of the centurion, uh, a different person who had faith in a different way. So a centurion in the Roman Empire is somebody who was over probably 80, 90, up to 100 infantrymen. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who has power. This is a guy who's a Roman uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, the Jews are occupied by them. Jesus is a Jew. So in worldly terms, the centurion is up here, and Jesus as a Jew is down here. Yeah. According to the world, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, so the world standards. Yep. The centurion goes risking how he looks, his position, mm -hmm. his credibility with other Romans, and his ability to use his authority to handle people who are in captivity based on his faith that Jesus will heal his servant. Mm -hmm. His suffering servant, yeah. exactly. And, and it just makes me think this. The centurion did not allow anything, any of those things I just mentioned, to be a stumbling block to keep him from coming to Jesus. Mm. What in our lives are the things mm. that we won't do and the stumbling yeah. blocks that we allow there? Hey, uh, I don't want to come to Jesus and admit that I'm unclean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come to Jesus and admit that I don't have it all together because of pride, because of how mm. it will look to other people. Be like the centurion. Absolutely. Don't let those things block you from what you need the most because you can't fix your own situation mm -hmm. in regards to these things. Only Jesus can. So run to him and let go of everything that is a barrier and a hindrance that keeps you from doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a great yeah. word, Emery. Um, in chapter nine, I'm just going to stick with my theme for one more, yeah. one more, one more chapter. That Jesus clean is stronger than your unclean. Yeah. It's stronger than mm -hmm. my unclean. It, he calls Matthew. Yeah, Matthew. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Matthew. Oh, my I lands. mean, is he clean? Is he clean? No, he's not. <laughs> not in the he's not not. In the, not in the opinion of those crowds that day. Nope. He is not clean. So he's a tax collector. Mm -hmm. Y'all have heard this before, but I want you to just really grasp onto this. So the Romans are occupying Jerusalem. They have taxes, all kinds of taxes, on the Jews. The Jews don't like the taxes. They hate the taxes. Yep. So you have we these, all hate taxes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I hate Nothing taxes. changes. <laughs> Right, so you have these Nothing guys, the old sun. school word called publicans. Publicans are guys that go to the Romans, and for a, an amount of money, they get an area that they're in charge of that they can collect the taxes. Whatever they get over and above, they get to keep. And then those guys, the publicans, they go and hire people like Matthew, who is Jewish, and he's going to go set up his booth, his tax collector booth. <laughs> And they're required to go to them. But they're coming to Matthew, who is one of their own, but he's a representative of the Romans. They are so despised. Yeah. They are the least of the least. Look, the Pharisees, yes. the Sadducees, all these guys, 
they look down on a person like Matthew like there's would nothing. You sh would you share with the audience? I loved it when we were meeting before uh, in, in preparation for the podcast. Emery yeah. had a great, uh, uh, maybe a modern day illustration yeah. of if we were sitting with our tax collector. Absolutely. If, uh, I, got a, I got a tax guy out in yeah. Schroeder. Sh shout out to you in Flat Rock, uh, yeah. Schroeder. I love you. He does my taxes, does a great awesome. job. But give, give me your illustration yeah. for the group. So what if you went to your tax guy <laughs> who represents you yes. before the U.S. government? Yes. And he said, hey, here's the deal. You owe X amount, but, you know, I'm going to make it twice that much mm -hmm. because... I can, yep. because you have to come to me and you have to pay it. And so he's telling you now how much in addition you're going to have to pay and you're sitting across the desk. From, how do you feel? Like exactly. You're going to be like, exactly. hey, no, wait a minute, right. I owe X. And he's going to be, no, you owe twice that. Right. Why? As much as I because liked, I said so. Yes, as much as I liked Alton, if yeah. he did that to me, don't do that to me, Alton. Yeah. <laughs> if he did that and Alton to me. wouldn't do that for you. <laughs> no, right? Alton wouldn't do that to me. Alton yes. loves me, and he's an honest man. Yeah. But but that's the way it was for these yeah. tax collectors in this day. And in chapter nine, you find um, here as Jesus passed on, he calls Matthew, says, "Follow me." And as Jesus reclined at the table, behold, many tax collectors. Yeah. So you don't oh, just yeah. have Matthew. You got yep. a whole slew of these dudes yeah. that are hated by the by the yeah. crowds of that are following Jesus, and sinners came, and were reclining with Jesus yeah. and his disciples, and when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, "Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Yeah. Why, why, mm -hmm. why, why?" And when he heard it, he said. Those who are well, Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but yeah. those who are sick. Yeah. Those who are sick. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, yeah. but sinners. Jesus Absolutely. said, these are the guys that I can't, these are the men and women and children. These, yeah. these are they who I have come for. And yeah. it's just whoever recognized their sinfulness. Yeah. You can't, it's impossible to come to Jesus if we yeah, don't, if recognize don't recognize our it. sinfulness. It was true in Jesus day in Matthew yeah. nine. It's true in our day right now that one of the first steps in, in, in coming to have a right relationship with Jesus is a recognize of my sinfulness. Yeah. And, and this, uh, I will say t to recognize your sinfulness, and one more time, that you reach out and you just say, Jesus is clean, is stronger yeah. than your unclean. Jesus yeah. is clean, is stronger than your unclean. Absolutely. Hey, there's a twist in here. So he's saying that to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And he's, and he's, you know, I've come to the sick. I haven't come to the righteous. Here's the problem. The Pharisees see themselves as righteous. Oh, totally. And they are totally unaware oh, yeah. Of their uncleanness. Absolutely. So they probably leave that situation thinking mm -hmm. he's not talking about us. Mm. They don't he's even get talking it. about They're not even those it. Yep. guys. Yep. When really later on he goes on to call them a brood of vipers, whitewashed tombs, all these different things because they don't get it. And not so much unlike me today yeah. and yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing mm -hmm. I'm not seeing my sin often mm -hmm. as clearly sometimes not often, but let's say as clearly as I'm seeing someone else's at times. Yeah. At times. Yes. I find myself in that same place. Because we do the same thing that yeah. they did. They yeah. were looking at sin relatively. Mm -hmm. They were looking at they're keeping all the rules mm -hmm. and then they were looking at these people who in their eyes their lives were messed up. And their lives were messed up. Pharisees didn't see that they were messed up. Hey, this can happen to us as church people any day. The minute you start thinking, well, I'm a church folk. I'm a mm -hmm. Jesus follower. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not like them. Then mm -hmm. you cross into that line. Every one of us, every yes, day, yes. needs the grace and mercy and forgiveness yes. of Jesus Christ because on our own, we are unclean. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Jesus clean, stronger yeah. than our unclean. Mm. Thank for God sure. for it. So if we go on to Matthew 10, the yeah. 12 apostles are named here. At the mm -hmm. beginning of Matthew 10, the names of the 12 apostles are, and it goes on Simon, Peter, Andrew. It goes yeah. on names, mm -hmm. all of them. An apostle is from the, this word apostle is from the Greek word apostolos. Yep. And its definition is an authorized representative 
or emissary mm -hmm. whose word has its authority of the sender. So yes. this is an authorized representative or emissary, and the word that the apostles speak has the authority of Jesus' yeah. words. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not operating on their own authority. Mm -mm. They're operating yes. on his authority. And it goes into that for, that word further means a messenger. Well, a messenger is someone yes. who is giving someone else's message and someone who is sent, a sent one. They're sent mm -hmm. by Jesus mm -hmm. to the world. <laughs> Absolutely. And they carried his power. Then they went out and he sent them out. And it was this is a, a really unique thing. When I see it, I... I I don't bristle. It's not that strong, mm. but I, I don't feel good whenever he sends them out yeah. to the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. So they're going to the Jews. They're not, and I'm yeah. not. I'm not a Jew. Nope. And so if they would not have been coming to Don Myers nope. in that instance. The Jesus sends them out to the lost sheep of yeah. Israel initially, and he's reaching out to them. And you'll see a little bit later, um, man, in chapter 11, um, in verse 20, that there's unrepentant cities. The cities that yeah. Jesus sent these apostles to, they didn't receive his message. Right. They didn't right. receive his forgiveness. They didn't receive the truth of who he said he was, the authority that he claimed to be the son of God. They yeah. didn't receive any of that. And so Jesus, um, when he saw, when they saw his miracles, when they saw the miracles of Jesus, they didn't believe. Because that's mm -hmm. one of the purposes of the miracles yeah. is to validate that Jesus they do. is who, one of the validations. Yes, yes, yeah. that Jesus is who he said he is. But the culture saw Jesus' miracles. And Jesus says in verse 20 of chapter 11, he says, Woe to you, unrepentant cities. Yeah. And I always think, man, what did these cities do? I mean, they saw miracles. Because sometimes I'm like, man, God, if you'll just do a miracle, if you'll just, if you will just do a miracle today, and man, the, yeah. the whole world would come to you. Mm -hmm. But these people saw the miracles of Jesus, and what did they do to Jesus? They crucified him. Absolutely. They crucified him. That's, Absolutely. That's so, so I don't believe we're, just like I've said uh, here, Three minutes ago, I don't think yeah. we're that much different than the people we see on the pages of Scripture Absolutely. here that we wouldn't respond to a miracle. Yeah, you know, if that weren't true, it would be that Jesus had done something for us in life, and then for the rest of our life, we just had faith that every situation he would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you and I both know we have a history of God doing things for us, and then six months later, in our brain, we act like. We're wondering if yeah. if he's going yeah. to do right. something. Are you there? Where are you, Lord? When, when we have you? this history. Yeah. It's, it's one of the reasons, I believe, why in the Old Testament, they're told repeatedly, remember, remember, mm. remember. Mm. You know, mm, remember whether, whether you write it down, whether you put it on your tassels, whether you yes. put it on your doorpost. Yes. Remember, remember. Because people like me forget Absolutely. what he has People done. like Don Myers forget. And yeah. can I just say this as the worship leader here at Kirby Church, uh, as one of the one of the worship leaders, we have we have a whole st uh, stage of worship leaders. And and but I want to say this: remembering is so important. And I think listening to worship music is one of the ways yeah. that we remember. Absolutely. Is sometimes I have to sing those songs in faith, mm -hmm. and I have to remember the goodness of God. I have to yeah. remember who God has been. I have to remember that it's the same God. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that's uh, operating today that yeah. we see here revealed on the pages of the Holy Scriptures. Yeah, that's powerful. We live in a world that tries to orient us away from who we are in Christ mm -hmm. and what Christ has done. Uh, something as simple as worship music reminds us of the yeah. themes of God yeah. and the history that we have with Him along the way. That's, that's awesome. I absolutely, love absolutely. I love it. Well, we've gone almost twenty minutes, Emery. I want to, wow. I want to give one little something, and then let you, then let you wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, there is an issue. If I, I I've got to skip a little because I'm going to honor our time. But yeah, man, in Matthew 13, and Emery, you, you land wherever you want to land. Okay, but I will. In Matthew 13, in verse 58, I see some, I see some very sad words here in Scripture. Um, Jesus is in his hometown, Nazareth. And if you feel welcomed anywhere, it should be kind of kind yeah. of your home, your hometown. This is uh, this is your place and they took offense at him in verse 57. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. Yeah. And in his own household. What a what a sad statement. And he, Jesus, did not do many mighty works there. Because of their un, 
belief. Yeah. And so for some reason that is, it, it is a, a bit of a mystery. Mm-hmm. The sovereign, all-powerful God of the world uh, calls for some faith and some belief yeah. before mm-hmm. he releases his uh, power, authority, yeah. um, his action. Sometimes before he acts, there is, uh, before he gives us forgiveness of sins. Yeah. He, there has to we be ask, our repentance. We, we have to, ask we have to recognize back mm-hmm. to the beginning. We have to recognize that Jesus is, Jesus yep. is clean is stronger than our Absolutely. unclean. And so has that has to happen. And then it's like the catalyst mm-hmm. that releases, it releases everything else that, yeah. that flows out and the power of Jesus' forgiving power, his healing power, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. is, is, is being held there. Um, there is a place that says our belief. Um, has a role to play in that. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. Um, I want to close with this. I want yes. to, so we have this moment of uh, of Peter getting out of the boat. And what uh, mm. you know? Mm. So we get on Peter a lot. We do. We, we do. We hammer the guy. We hammer the guy, and it, and like like we're any better? Mm. Like like we would. The guy would we he, be as good? I'm saying he walked on water. <laughs> yeah, he he did it. He, he did got it. out of the boat. Nobody else got out of the boat. He got yep. out of the boat. I don't know if I would have been one to get out of the boat. <laughs> and so he's an amazing guy, amazing Jesus follower. Uh, but he takes his eyes off Jesus and he looks at the waves. And the result of that is he starts to focus on the problem instead. Uh, of the one that he should be focusing mm-hmm. on. Uh, it just reminds me of this. You know, being a Christian is about a relationship, and relationships are day to day things. You can't live on yesterday's faith. Yeah. You can't live on, on things that happened five years ago. Every day it's fresh walking with Jesus. You have a choice every day. Do I look at Jesus or do I look at the waves? Mm. And Ooh. I'm just going to tell you some, Ooh, some days Henry, I look at the waves. On. On, and man. I'm going to tell you that my bent Come inside on, of me is to look at the waves this is true. more than to look at Jesus. That's why you have to stay anchored in his word. You man. have to stay anchored in his church. You have Those to stay anchored in relationships oh. that uh, lead you closer to Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's how we're meant to, meant to live. So today, Amen. keep your eyes Amen. on Jesus. The problems are not the focus. Jesus, the one who can take you through the problems, be with you in the problems, and carry you through every day. That's where we live. That's where we dwell every day as followers of Jesus Christ. So, hey, we love you guys. We will see you this Sunday.